There is a lot of jargon involved when you start building circuits, and it can be difficult when you first get started because people around you might just use these terms and assume you know what they're talking about, and maybe you're too embarrassed to ask what they mean, because it's not like anybody ever handed you a vocabulary list. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the common acronyms and jargon that you might encounter when getting involved with circuits as a hobby or in an introductory level college class. So let's start with our first phrase. This one is not an acronym. What do people mean when they say discrete components? So these are all the individual separate parts that you can use to build a circuit, things like resistors, capacitors, LEDs, and transistors. Discrete here means individual or separate. So each one of these is its own part. It's not multiple things in a single package. That is in contrast to an integrated circuit where you do have an entire circuit with multiple individual parts like transistors, capacitors, resistors, etc., all integrated on a circuit in a single package. Now, usually this will be in some sort of black package like this where you can't really see inside, although some of these will have a window that lets you see the circuit inside or people will remove the plastic packaging so you can see. But the individual parts in this circuit, things like resistors, are much, much smaller than the discrete components. These are big enough that you can see them with the naked eye and pick them up and handle them, whereas the parts in this circuit are going to be way smaller, even microscopic. Now, when you get started building circuits, you will most likely do so on a breadboard pictured here. Now, this does not involve literal bread, but the name is based on the historical use of wooden boards with nails or screws driven into them to connect wires. This is a solderless breadboard, meaning it allows you to quickly and temporarily connect parts without permanently soldering them together. So the parts fit into these holes in the breadboard, which have little metal clips inside that grip the parts to make electrical connections. You can see some examples of circuits over here. Hopefully it does not get this messy. One step up from that and a little more permanent is a perf board or proto board. This is a board with a grid of holes that are lined with metal, so you can permanently solder parts to them to make a more permanent connection once you've prototyped your circuit and figured out how you want things to be laid out. Now, this still involves a lot of manual soldering when you are ready to get to the mass production or highly customizable stage when you have a more permanent design. That is where you would move up to a printed circuit board or PCB. So this is what you would see if you've ever taken the case off of any sort of electronic device or looked at the motherboard of a computer. It is a board made of a non-conductive material, but it has conductive traces with pads or holes for mounting the circuit parts. And again, this is a customized configuration for a specific circuit with the traces laid out to connect the parts in a specific way. So this is not reconfigurable, unlike the breadboard, which is easily reconfigurable, and the perfboard or protoboard, which you can desolder, so it's a little more work, but you can still remove and move components around on this. This is really something designed for mass production, although people do sometimes make and etch their own PCBs at home if you need to make a small customized batch of something. So we have a few more acronyms to cover. The first is plated through hole or PTH. This refers to the holes on a circuit board that are plated with metal. So you can put the lead of a component through the hole and then solder it to the board. These are the components that you would use with a solderless breadboard or a proto board as well. This is in contrast to surface mount devices, SMD, or surface mount technology, SMT. These components sit flat on top of the printed circuit board and are soldered to pads on the board as opposed to having leads that go through the holes. Now, these can be soldered by hand, but that is much more difficult as these can get really tiny. So when starting out and working with hand soldering things, you're probably going to be working with through hole components instead. And finally, we have one more acronym, dual inline package or DIP. This refers to integrated circuits that come in this package with two rows of pins in two parallel lines. You will notice when using a breadboard that the spacing of those two lines is such that they straddle this gap in the middle of the breadboard, so the two sides of pins are electrically isolated from each other. How to use a breadboard is a different video, but there is no electrical connection across this gap. Again, these are very common with through-hole integrated circuits that make them easy to use with either a breadboard a perf board or a printed circuit board. So let's do a quick recap there. In this picture, we have a printed circuit board with some integrated circuits, 
some of which are surface mount devices, but we also have some plated through holes here. We do not have any dual inline packages or dips in this picture. And again, this is not an exhaustive list of jargon and acronyms, but hopefully it makes you a little more comfortable when you're getting started with electronics.